Well, hello there, and how are you doing? Oh, I am so glad to hear it. So am I, still alive, still kicking. I still haven't got my vaccination yet, but I live in hope. I am on a list, in a queue, to get an appointment to get my vaccination. Wow. Well, one day it will happen. Who knows? In the meantime, I'm keeping busy and staying in mischief. And today's flight is no exception. This flight was recommended by a fellow who calls himself Eduardo McFly on YouTube. He challenged me to go from Quito to Guayaquil in Ecuador. So... That's what I'm going to do. And besides, down there, it's still summer. Here, it's still winter. And I'm always looking for an escape into a better climate. Anyway, it's first thing that we need to do. We need to plan the flight. We need to look at all of the documents. We need to make the flight plan. We need to get all of our clearances. So. If you're ready, let's get started and do that, shall we? Well, the first thing I did, of course, was to go online and find out if there were any commercial flights between Quito and Guayaquil. And I discovered on Google that there was indeed a flight. In fact, this is the flight that I found. LATAM XL1355, flying between those two points at 0605 in the morning, local time there. And the flight runs every day at that same time. Next, I went to FlightAware to see what the history of that flight was. And you can see here the route that it took. When I went and clicked on for Wednesday, well, you can see here that it was expected to depart in 51 minutes. That would be about right for by the time I was able to enter the cockpit and get everything cranked up and ready to go. Now, I had a look at windy.com. Here you can see the wind for Guayaquil are 200 degrees at four knots. So the likelihood is that we would be landing on runway 21. There you can see the airport itself. So we would be anticipating a straight in approach. Then I went to Quito and found that the winds were relatively calm because it was early in the morning. And here's the runway. In all probability, the direction of the flight would be to take off on runway 36. Next, I went into Simbrief. After logging in, got the information put in. As you can see all the way across the top, we are Ryanair, flight 186, departing from SEQM, and which is Quito, and going to SEGU, which is Guayaquil. And it gave us Quito to return to for the alternate. Oh, well, the date and time was pretty correct. There's my airframe, 737-800 for Ryanair 186. The total flight time 
or block time, if you will, was one hour and 10 minutes. The departure runway they predicted here being 36 and the arrival being 21. I changed the passengers to four and the cargo to two tons. This is the flight route that it returned. And that's the Quito 2 departure going to QIT, which is a, a waypoint. And then on that route, straight down to another waypoint called Temox and making the approach. All I had to do now was save the flight plan and then export it into a briefing plan. And there we are. Everything that we need. Block fuel that would be required is 5,594, pretty much six tons. Looking at the winds aloft, this would be at our flight level and you can see that we would have variable winds flying down this route. Here is the profile and you can see the departure. We are quite high up in the Andes Mountains and we have to make quite a steep ascent to get over those mountains. So by the time we get to QIT, that fixed point, we had better be at altitude, otherwise we're in trouble. Once we get to the top of climb, it's a short little hop before the descent and then a long, gentle descent, sea level airport of Guayaquil. We are going to start out at stand 53. If we're going to depart on runway 36, then this is the information that we're going to need. Here you can see the Quito 2 departure. There's a long curve all the way around and we we'll need to stay on this and it takes us all the way to the QIT point at which point we do need to be above 15,500 feet. When we arrive we are likely to be coming in on a straight in approach onto runway 21. The transition point for us is going to be Palma or PAL. We will need to set the ILS DME for 110.3 and we will need to set 213 degrees on the approach. In case of a missed approach, there is what we need to do. We fly out, take 260 degrees and hold at SOL, Chongon. Once we land at Guayaquil, we will be parking at stand 15. And that's the information that we need. Now that we're all prepared, it's time to go jump into the cockpit and crank up the engines and go and fly over Ecuador. Are you ready? Then let's go on in and fly Ryanair 186. Hello there. Come on in. Take your seat and let's get ourselves buckled up and ready to go. We're here at stand 53 at Quito Airport. That's S-E-Q-M if you want to look that up. 
and we are going to do a flight today down to Guayaquil. And Guayaquil is S-E-G-U. It is just about dawn here at uh, Quito. We're all set and ready to go. As you can see, there's plenty of kamikaze <laughs> vehicles running around. I think they're all daring me to move just so that they can use me for target practice. Well, we shall have to see. Now, this was a flight requested by Eduardo McFly. And I suspect he lives somewhere in Quito. That's the reason why he recommended it. Or perhaps he lives down in Guayaquil. I'm not sure. But I'm hoping that you're ready and watching. We're going to be following LATAM Flight XL1355. So if you're ready, let's get ourselves started, shall we? All right, we put the power on, the batteries, we turn on the fuel pumps, and then we start up the auxiliary power supply. It'll take a moment before it swings up. Low pressure light always comes on first till it climbs up and then that light will go off. The forward service hatch and the ramp is down outside so people can get on. This is the time of day when there's a lot of flights leaving Quito to go down to other places in Ecuador. So there's one over there that's taxiing to the active runway. So that suggests that we will be on departing runway 36. We'll have to see. The winds are relatively calm at this time of day. So we're not quite sure. Right, now we have 115 volts coming in. So we want to turn on the IRS. That's the GPS location system. We'll turn on the galley, emergency lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. And here's the window heat and the probes, the electrical pumps. And then we'll turn on the APU bleed. And there it is. Now we're going to start to hear the, uh, there we go. There's the blowers going through the heating and air conditioning system. Now, our flight cruise altitude is 26,000 feet. And let's, if we do that, I'm told that the stewardess is going to come and give me a drink. I'm not sure if I should hold my breath. What do you think? Oh, well, probably not. Okay, now everything across the board is all set. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to program the FMC. So we're going to go and put in our position here. And we are at SEQM. And according to the charts, 53, stand 53 should be 00.07.5, 00 
and West 07821.4. That looks like we are at it. Now we'll go to the root and put in the root. So we are SEQM and we're going to go to SEGU. We have Ryanair flight 186. Go to the next page. Now we'll look at the chart here and it says we'll be going to QIT first. So we're direct to QIT and then on UW9 We will go then to Temox. That's it. That's a very easy program. Now we'll go to the fix and we'll put in the fix for Guayquil. So S E G U. We need Ford and then ten and then thirty nautical mile circle. We'll go to the descent and put in the information for flight level two hundred, flight level one fifty, and one hundred. Local barometric pressure is 1025. And the barometric pressure in Guayaquil is 1010. Flight level 200 the information says it's 208 degrees at 10 knots. And at 150 it is 244 at 5 knots. And at flight level 100 it is 195 at 1 knot. fairly calm conditions. Now we'll need to contact ground and request our departure south and see what they give us. Quito ground, Ryanair 186 ready to taxi south departure. Ryanair 186 Quito ground, airport is currently IFR. Request denied. Ah! Well, we're going to ignore that. They've been leaving from 3-6, so we're going to put in 3-6. And we'll be using the Keto 2 departure. It is suggested that we should be on runway 21 coming in, which means we'll be on the Temok 2 arrival. And the PAL transition. So we'll put that in. Now let's have a look at the route. 
and the plan and see how it works out. So go through on the steps. We're looking for routing continuities. There we go, there's one. So So we're going to put this up to here and then that takes us into a direct straight in approach. Right, let's see that. Good. We are then all set. So we have good plan here. Now let's do the initialization. Now our trip today is 3,117 and the trip and tax is 1,811. So that's four, call it five, it's close. Reserves are 3.1. Cost index is 6. Our cruise altitude is 1.95. The average wind is 195 at 5. Transition altitude is 18,000 feet. Thirteen degrees. We're going to be flaps ten. This airport is quite high, so we will need all the runway that we can get. And there's the information. So one forty-three on that, and departure from three six is O O one. So we'll put 001 into our course and heading. And let's check our flight plan. We have two green lights. We are good to go. It's foggy outside. All the mountains are shrouded in cloud. So that's the reason why it's IFR only today, but I'm going to do it anyway. So shh, don't tell air traffic control. All right, everybody's on board, so we'll close the stairs and the doors. We'll look for these lights to go off. Right, the lights have gone out. Everybody is sitting down. So we'll contact the ground crew and ask them for a pushback so that we can do a start. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Parking brakes off. Parking brakes off. Brakes released. We're going to start engine number two today, so I'm going to switch this to generator two. Actually, here we go. But, and I'm turning off the air conditioning so that we've got the flow. So we're now starting the engine number two. The start valve open. 
and it's starting to build up. When this gets to six uh, to 24, we'll introduce the fuel. There we go. And listening for the engine noise to start up. Yes, it's building up. We have a burn. There we go. You can hear the engines now. And we're looking to check that we have 115 volts. We have 115. Good. Turn that off and turn this on. Starting engine number one now. The start valve showing open. It's building up. When that gets to 24, we'll introduce the fuel flow. Push back complete, please. Parking brake is on. Fuel is introduced. We're making sure that we have a good start here. Good. Low pressure has gone off making sure that we have 115 volts up on top. Ah yes, you can hear the engine pick now. There we go, 115 volts. We have good start, so now we will switch the bus to the main engines and we will turn off the APU and then put back the blowers onto the air conditioning system for the people in the back. Since we're at 26,000 feet cruising, I've got that set in here in the cabin pressure. Landing altitude I've got here for zero because it is a very low airport. Anti-skid, set flaps 10, We are about to move. Now let's just check. Recall. Check. Flight controls are check. Flaps. And green light. Check. Stabilizer trim is check. Auto brake is set. RTO. Speed brake lever is down detent. Ground equipment is clear, except for the kamikaze vehicles in front of us. So, checklist is complete, briefing is complete. We are set to go. Right, TCAS is on. Decision height at Guayaquil is 300 feet, so we will put 300 into the barometric pressure. In that case, we are now set to go, so break off. Little boost in the fuel to get ourselves unstuck. And we'll make our way to the active runway. Ah, you can see that the fog is lifting. And here's another kamikaze coming straight for us. Ah, dear, oh dear, oh dear.
up traffic, looks good. And stick our hand out, turn right. Ah, one day I should put some indicators in here, what do you think? is starting to lift. This is early morning. This is at the same time that the LATAM flight would be departing. So we're following the schedule pretty closely. This is a fairly detailed airport scenery and I'm showing 30 to 33 frames per second. Not bad. So how have you been? You've been fine? Good. You have plans for when we arrive in Guayaquil? Gonna go on the beach? Sounds like a plan. It's still summer in Ecuador, you know. about now air traffic control will be having a fit watching us going out here but then again we're Ryanair we can do what we want ha! if only
able to see it too closely, but this screen represents the active sky for computer flight one, which is over there and runs all of this. The screen outside is run by flight two and there is an active sky loaded onto that. And as you can see, well perhaps you can't, but let me give it a bit better here. The conditions are pretty much the same on both computers. So Active Sky is doing a very good job of giving me accurate representation of the weather both on here and on there through two computers.
18.5 DME miles from landing.
1,000. Check.
going to dock is right over there. Bienvenido a Guayaquil. I hope that you brought your umbrellas and that you're all set to go out there and enjoy summer in Ecuador. This is just liquid sunshine that you see here. I hope you've enjoyed the flight and I hope that you will be flying with Ryanair 186 in the future. Great to have you on board. Right, we'll start to shut everything down. Stairs are down. Doors are open. IRS is off. Galley is off. Engine switches are off. Electrical are off. And... Everything is set, looks good. So, APU is off, fuel is off, batteries are off, shutdown is complete. Yes, we made it.